Welcome to a random parking lot. Today I figure what we need to do is test out the range on the new Phantom 4's remote control. Figure out how far it goes and then I'm going to be installing the range booster kit on the joystick or on the controller which comes with these directional one-sided antennas and it comes with all the hardware and everything you need to do the installation. So first off we're gonna run this thing out here, see where the signal loss starts to get really problematic. And then we'll install this and see if it makes a difference. Now it is pretty dang windy out here, so our battery life's gonna be a little bit affected by that. We're gonna set our elevation at about 400 feet and then just see how far out we can go. All right, we're at 2,000 feet from here. I got a low signal error, but it's working again, so we'll keep going. And 2,668 feet, it says aircraft disconnected. Oh, now we're reconnected again. Go ahead and stop, return to home. Let's see here, I think we can go a little bit further. 3,500, 4,000, and weak signal. Weak signal at 4,200 and completely disconnected at 4200. Now the antenna is on the front legs of these, so as it's going away, they're actually on the wrong side. As soon as it turns around and faces you, it typically will reconnect. And I've got it set to return to home five seconds after it disconnects. But it looks like, looks like that's a hard disconnect, so we'll assume it's coming back now. <laughs> okay, there we go, now it's at 3800. So we'll say 4200 is our theoretical maximum right now, and it's on the way back. It reconnected, but it says weak signal. All right, so we'll wait for this thing to come back, and then we'll take apart this controller and install the kit. Even coming back right now at 2500 feet, I'm getting weak transmission errors. Now we're in a pretty uh, noisy urban environment here as far as radio signal and interference, but there is a pretty good line of sight where we're headed here basically going straight out that direction. So I don't think this building should be too much of a problem. I mean, we have line of sight. I don't know how precision landing is gonna work, so I might have to take control of it as it's coming down. It almost set itself down in the tree right here behind me. The uh, Precision landing does not seem to work on this very well. This kit supposedly comes with all the tools that you need to make this mod. So, let's see here. Looks like we've got our uh, BNC antenna adapters here. Uh, a couple of tools, some wrenches. All right, there we go. Pull this off. I haven't read any instructions on this. I'm just assuming the back of this controller comes off. Might have to search the internet real quick to figure out how this thing comes apart. As I thought, you have to take off these little rubber things here. Looks like they're just glued on from the video I saw. Uh, come on, glue, work with me. Yeah, it looks like I might have to replace the glue on that. Yeah, there we go. Got those off. We've got two more screws here. And a couple more screws under down here as well. There we go. Little ribbon cable right here. All right, there we go, got that loose. I'll take the rest of these screws out of here. Ah, and those are Phillips. Luckily we have a screwdriver for that as well. All right, those screws are out of there. Couple more ribbon cables here to unclip. And these have little pull tabs on them, which makes it nice. There we go. The two halves should come apart. There we go. 
Looks like we got a connector down here on the bottom. All right, there we go. Top half is off. And it looks like here, our antenna wires come down and plug in at these two little points right here. And there's some little blobs of glue over here too. It looks like have to come off. Probably should have brought some tweezers. And these little antenna wires just basically pop off of here. You have to use just a little bit of force with a little flat blade or something and they just come right off. To very carefully pull these wires through. There's a ribbon cable on this side here and there's a bunch of glue holding everything down. So you gotta be really careful not to damage the ribbon cables. Eh, looks like we're gonna have to remove this joystick uh, to get the cables to clear underneath there. And I also had to remove our other little dial here. Now we should be able to lift this up just enough to get that wire with the connector on it to pass through. There we go. All right, got both of our wires now removed here. Next trick is, it looks like, it looks like you just compress these little clips right here, I'm guessing, to take these off. Yep, there we go, just like that. And looks like we'll have to remove this other wheel over here to allow that access out. There we go. All right, the antennas are removed. Just realized I did that wrong. I have to put this part in here first, then we can route the wires. So these B and C connectors slide in first. We'll go ahead and just loosely, loosely put the outside connector on this thing. There we go. And finish routing our wires. Okay, we have our first antenna wire here clipped back into place routed it routed it down through here back up around and clipped it into the board right here all right our second one is in place here do a similar routing with the wires and click we are in place now we'll use our included wrenches here to go ahead and snug these down Those are nice and snug now. Cool. I think we're ready for uh, reassembly. Oh wow. That just barely fits in here. Look at the clearance on this. Between this B and C connector and the scroll wheel, it just barely fits. But I think we'll be good to put our screw in. Yep. Good. I'm gonna have to review the footage real quick because I don't remember which way this uh, control stick came out, so I'm gonna look at the video and see. For some reason, there's like helicopters circling around here. Not quite sure what's going on with that, but we're gonna have to wait on this range test till later because with those guys running around, there's no way I'm putting this thing in the air. Because that's not very safe. Do a quick check here to make sure none of the wires are trapped underneath this thing. And cool, looks like we're good. Put the screws back in. All right, I do believe we're ready to put the shell back together. We've got our wires run here in pretty much the same method that they were originally. Everything's plugged in. Our uh, BNC connectors up top here are screwed in tight. Uh, so yeah, time for final assembly. All right. And you can tell it's in place because there's a little white line that will line up with the edge of the connector. We just fold this, and there we go. We're locked in place. Now we can put the screws back in and reattach these other two little ribbon cables. like our glue is still somewhat serviceable. This other one, it got a little bit peeled off, so I'm gonna see if I can kind of reposition it here. And the plugs here on the bottom are keyed. You can see there's a little notch on the plug and also on the controller. So I just kind of line that up and uh, the glue should hold it back in place there. 
Now it's as easy as uh, screwing on these antennas. Here we go. And there it is. We now have our directional antennas on here. They rotate and fold up and down depending on what direction you're flying. And the idea is you want to keep these pointed in the direction of where you're flying the drone. And all the signal comes out of this side instead of 360 degrees like they come out of these. Let's put a fresh battery in this thing and uh, give it a test. Looks like all of our air traffic and helicopters and stuff have been gone for a good 40 minutes now, so I think we should be all right. There we go, front of the case wasn't quite clipped in. <laughs> Let's uh, see if we can beat our, was it 4,100, 4,200 feet, whatever it was. Oop, gotta keep it pointed at it. As soon as I pointed the other direction, it uh, got weak signal. <laughs> These things are very directional. All right, 2,000 feet, strong signal. 3,000 feet, 3,500. Haven't gotten any connection errors yet. All right, 4,000 feet, I got one little glitch. I'm gonna raise the elevation to 500 feet. All right, 4,100 at 500 feet, going straight out still. 4,200, 4,300. Still solid signal. 5,000 feet, still solid. 5,300. All right, 5,500 had one little blip saying weak signal, but... Okay, we're at 5,600 and we've got weak signal. Make sure we're pointed right out there at it. All right, continue on. 57, 58, 6,000. Okay, weak image transmission. Okay, aircraft disconnected. Okay, we're reconnected now. Still says it's weak, we're right at 6,000 feet away. Kind of move this around here and see if it improves. Aircraft disconnected. All right, there's a hard disconnect. So it came back a little bit, we're at 5,900. We're facing towards me though, let me rotate it around. See if we can push it out just a little bit further here. Okay, it looks like 6,000 feet is about our limit with it facing away from us. So yeah, that's a pretty significant improvement. All right, let's put the thing in sport mode and bring it back here in a hurry. Our horizontal ground speed is 43 miles an hour. We're about 2,500 feet away. I'm gonna put it back in GPS mode and keep coming in. I'm just gonna land it manually because the automatic landing, right here at least, has been less than reliable. I don't wanna stick this one in a tree just yet. That skin works really well. I can see the thing. There we go. See that black spot right there? That's it. And it's only because of that skin that you're able to see it. Normally, it would be invisible up there. There we go. I would say that's a pretty moderate success. We went from like 4,000 to 4,100 feet to, what was it, 6,000 or something? But uh, yeah, these, uh, these antennas are definitely worth the money. I think on eBay, I wanna say they were maybe 50 bucks at the most, maybe less than that. Um, it was a little bit more work than I thought to install these. It's definitely not for the faint of heart. There's a lot of stuff you can damage in there uh, pretty easily. But um, yeah, good job, China. It's a really effective solution. And you know, we're in a very congested area. If we were out in the middle of nowhere, uh, this would be, so much better. I'm confident we could get to the 8,000 foot fence that these things have set up on them. I suppose the next thing we're gonna have to do is test out the carbon fiber propellers. Uh, there's a kit that comes in here to install these and they're not, they're not quick connects, so they're sort of semi-permanently installed. But I think those uh, should make a pretty good difference as well. They have a slightly different pitch to them and they're a lot lighter weight. The nice thing about this rolling luggage though is you can put your drone down in here and you don't have to remove the propellers. It has these little uh, standoff protectors here. And there's a little bit of a gap between the top and the bottom when you close this. That's why all the batteries have straps to hold them in. But yeah, I, I really like this case. It's uh, very functional. You will, however, want to remove <laughs> these antennas because there obviously is not enough clearance to close this thing with these, uh, with these antennas on here. 